thank you for coming today evening. Am I audible behind? Yeah. yeah, thank you. So as I mentioned, I'll talk on the topic of security in insecurity. Security is a fundamental need that we all have. And we try to fulfill it in various ways. If you feel cold, we want security and we might wear warm clothes because of that. If we feel <coughs> too hot, we might go into the opposite situation, which will make us more comfortable. That is, we could say comfort and security at the physical level. While there is security, there is also what can be called as security theatre. Security theatre means it's the whole gamut of activities that we do which we think will make us secure, secure. But actually, they don't promote security. They simply create an illusion of security. And when this illusion of security is confronted with the reality of insecurity, we become even more fearful. Most of our life, we spend trying to make arrangements by which we can become secure. And in general, if there is a situation where we feel we have some control over things, we think that is safer than the things on which we have no control. So for example, often if there is a plane accident, that is a plane crash or a plane explosion, that is widely publicized. And that's what catches our imagination. So after the Twin Tower attack, many people tried to stop using planes and the, they started driving cars more and more. Now statistically, the percentage of car accidents is more than the car percentage of air accidents. But somehow when we are driving a car ourselves and we are sitting, because we have the sense of control, we think we will be safer. Whereas sitting as a passenger in a car, in a plane, where we have no control, seems to be more fearful. On the other, similarly, I may think, if I go out, somebody may rob me, an intruder may attack me. And if, I, if I'm at home, safely sitting, watching TV, I'm, I, I'm much safer. However, the chances of somebody getting attacked by an intruder while going along the road are actually lesser than somebody getting a heart attack because of too many sedentary activities and becoming an act. So there is this counterintuitive reality that there are certain things which we think are more secure but actually they end up being less secure. Broadly speaking, to focus too much on security is like trying, trying to keep everything secure and in our control is trying to hold our breath. Breath is essential for life. But the way breath is essential for life is it keeps flowing. Flowing in and flowing out. If we hold breath, we will eventually lose the breath. The way to protect breath is to let it flow. When we focus too much on holding on to the breath, what, what is happening when there is the coming in of air, going out of air? That is the time there is change. But it is through the change that life goes on. So often we feel insecure because of unpredictable or unwanted change. But life itself is filled with change. If we stand by a river and look at the river, at one level it just seems to be flowing on moment after moment, hour after hour, day after day. What happens? 
day after day, month after month, the river seems to be moving on. However, the river is not the same. Every moment the river is changing. A Greek philosopher said that we don't step into the same river twice. Once we may step in, and again we step in, that time the river has changed. The water in is continuously flowing and changing. The Bhagavad Gita says that na asato vidyate bhavo. There is nothing that is enduring at the material level of reality. So the attempt to seek security is the attempt to stop change. And if that is the definition of security, that is impossible. Now, when there is security theatre, that means we do a lot of activities which tell us there will be security. But they don't actually make us safer. At that time, what essentially happens is that we are trying to hold our breath more and more and more. And we think the greater our capacity to retain our breath, the greater is our security. What do I mean by retain our breath? Retain our breath means it's a metaphor for trying to control the uncontrollables and finding security in that. Just as breath keeps flowing, life keeps changing. And therefore, uh, the way to find security is not so much by going outwards, but by going inwards. Now, what do I mean by going inwards? If we consider everything around us is changing then why is it that we even have the idea that things should not change and that why do we at all seek security in an unchanging foundation that is because the external is changing but at the internal level there is a foundation that is unchanging now, at inside also there is change. In fact, our moods, our emotions can change at an alarmingly fast rate. But beyond the emotions is something more. So, the Bhagavad Gita, which is the ancient yoga text for conscious living, offers a three-level model of the self. So this three-level model, it's working. Uh, people on online, they are not able to hear you. So I have to just, uh, yeah, sure. sorry. Let's <coughs> Let's go. He's muted. No, let's resume call. This was just. Uh, can, you, can you hear us on the phone? No. Can you hear us on the phone? Anybody? Oh, the minute I switched off, I think. I'll try calling once again. Can you hear us? It's okay. Yes, okay. We'll, we'll continue. Uh, remove that tab. Undo that ribbon on top. Cut the call. Start it once again. Try okay. That. Actually, three people were there. I think it's strong. It's not. I think we 
Tiver que levar aquele gordo com esse porra. Yeah, actually, so we have to. Uh, 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 yeah, volume. Yeah, you don't need your volume. Yeah, just, just, just. Is it? You need to remove the volume. Yeah, just, just, just. Yeah, yeah. Now, you take a shit. Share the desktop. Did I share the desktop? The desktop. Yeah. It's showing up. Is showing up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Just press that button. There is a presentation. I'll take care of that. It's not showing up. Somewhere it should be here. Present? There's, there's a primary monitor? Secondary monitor. Yeah, this this one is. Uh, yeah. Leave it from. Is it moving? Okay. It's not moving. Right? <laughs> One thing, take it aside, fix it, and get it back. I'll continue the class. Can't keep people waiting yeah. for so long. Yeah. Okay. Just take it aside. Yeah. Fix it and move it. Yeah, you can, you can continue. Yeah. Sorry about the disturbance. Yeah. So we'll continue. So the. It talks about a three-level model of the self. Okay. Can you shift us? Yeah. Okay. So body, mind, and self, consciousness, soul. This is like the hardware, software, and user. The hardware refers to the physical level of reality. The software is subtler than the hardware, but that is also important for functioning. That's like the mind. And beyond that is the level of consciousness, the level of the self. That is the spiritual level of reality. So to understand this three level model, let's uh, consider a situation where we do a thought experiment. Some of you are taking your food. If you could you can join the thought experiment or you can continue eating, others can join the thought experiment. So wherever you are, you can sit comfortably and you can close your eyes and you can take three deep breaths. One. Now, as you've taken these deep breaths, Try to notice which part of your body is the most tense. It may be your feet, it may be your arms, it may be your belly, it may be your fingers, it may be your forehead. As you notice that part is tense, just relax it. If Say your fist, you can clench it right now and clench it as tightly as possible and then release it. Take a deep breath. Now again, repeat this action of clenching your fist and releasing it. But while doing so, try to with your inner eye, try to visualize your fist as it closes, tightens and releases. Although your eyes are closed and you can't see your fist, you can visualize it with your mind. Now as you are visualizing it, once again, do this same action a third time where you clench your fist, tighten it and release it. And while doing so, visualize in your mind's eye the fingers relaxing. Take a deep breath. 
take a deep breath. You'll notice here that there is an inner screen on which you could see say your fingers, your arm, your hands that might be tense and you can see as you relax that hand. Now on the same inner screen you can as you keep observing it you will see various different images coming and going. You may see the, this room, you may see your home, you may see a loud one, you may see your phone. All this is like a procession of images coming and going on your inner screen. But you remain different. You remain different from that screen as the observer of that screen. You can take one deep breath and open your eyes. Thank you. So what this thought experiment indicates is that we can get a conceptual glimpse of this three level reality. That the physical real level of reality is like the outer scene. The mental level of reality is like the inner screen. And beyond that is the inner seer. Now when we experience life all these three, the outer scene, the inner screen and the inner seer come together in one line. And that is when perception takes place. So I will use this metaphor again to illustrate how we will deal with fear. Now we will focus on four principles, four reflections for Finding security amidst insecurity. That's an acronym fear. So focus, engage, arise and release. So first is focus. Usually when we experience fear, what exactly happens? The inner screen which is there inside us, it starts becoming like a TV. And that TV starts playing a horror movie. In that horror movie, we may, choose, we may see, oh, I've lost my job. This has happened, that has happened, that has happened. We may come to office and our boss, we see a strange look in our boss's eyes. And that one thought, oh, why are you looking like this? Maybe he's going to fire me. Oh, if I am fired, what will happen to me? What will I do? How will I live? Where will I live? How will I manage myself? A chain of thought starts off. And it all starts being vividly displayed on this inner screen. And the more vivid the image, imagery, the more the movie goes on, the more we become fearful. In the spring la, this year when I had come to America I had gone to visit a friend in California and he had a big house so I was staying sitting with him and behind the house was beautiful green scenery and we were sitting and talking about spirituality and I was looking at a huge big window he had from which we could see the scenery outside and then as we were looking at the window suddenly I saw a huge gorilla charging towards the window the kind you might see in Planet of the Apes and charging towards and he raised his arm and was a pound on the window and he pounded on the window and the window didn't crack. I was a little alarmed and I looked at him and he was, my friend was grinning and I looked at him once again and I noticed that he had something in his hands. I peered aside, peered down and then I he picked up something and he had some kind of button, he pressed it and the gorilla disappeared. 
I said, what is this? So he told me that just for entertainment, he had designed that window in such a way that the window could double as a TV screen. <laughs> and on that TV screen, just for entertainment, he had made a video montage, which with the same background as was visible through the window, he had created a gorilla appearing. So, as I was observing it, I was thinking, this is how our mind functions. On our inner screen, fearful stimuli come up. Throughout our life, we experience many fearful situations, most of which never happen. More than 95% of our fears are more imagined than actualized. This is not to say that there are no real fears. But the point is that it is our mind's imagination that exaggerates the fears. So, focus means when we start feeling insecure, when we start feeling fearful, when we start getting worried, at that time, we pause the TV. The TV is playing on and on, we pause it by asking a simple question to ourselves. What exactly is the problem right now? Oh, this may happen, that may happen, that may happen, that may happen. Hey, we see our boss gives us a strange look. Okay, and we say, what if I lose my job? How will I pay the mortgage to my house? Oh, I'll be homeless, I'll be on the streets. How will I live? Okay, we may start becoming fearful. What exactly is the problem right now? Okay, the problem is that, okay, my boss gave me a strange look. What, what exactly is the problem right now? Okay, I had to meet a deadline. I have not yet met the deadline. So, as soon as we ask this question, what exactly is the problem right now? The TV which is moving on and on, it pauses. It, foc it brings a focus. Okay. When we have something tangible to deal with, then we don't feel as insecure as when there is a whole mist of insecurity where there is nothing for us to tangibly catch. When the mind starts showing a horror movie, we just don't know what to deal with, what to, do, what to deal with and how to deal with. But focus gets us to focus on what, on some tangible issue, what exactly is the problem right now. Then, once we do this, we need to act. So the second part is engage. Now this inner screen, as I said, it has to function for us to perceive anything. So right now say, if you are hearing this talk, and I am speaking this. So right now, if suddenly a thought comes in your head, hey, did I lock my house when I came from home today? If it's not locked properly, somebody might steal something. Where did I keep my keys? So as one thought may pop up, suddenly a chain of thoughts may start over there. And then that distracts us. So basically, this inner screen, if it acts like a window, we, we are able to perceive the outer world. But if it acts like a TV, it distracts us in various directions. So what we do is, this inner screen, we get to focus on something tangible by asking the question, what can I do about it right now? This is the problem. What exactly is the problem right now? There might be a big problem, but what exactly is the problem right now? A student, uh, we may have to give some interview. And there may be a lot at stake in the interview. But what exactly is the problem right now? Okay, the problem is I am simply getting fearful. Uh, what can I do about it right now? I can calm myself down. I can focus on preparing my presentation. So as soon as we have something tangible which we can act on, as long as we are inside our head, fear takes us on a ride. But as soon as we get out of our head, what can I do about this right now? This question gets us to focus on something tangible. Basically by those two questions, focus and engage, we are coming back to the present. When we go into the past, oh this went wrong, that went wrong, that went wrong, in the future, that may go wrong, that may go wrong, that may go wrong. In both cases, we end up feeling powerless. 
But when we can get ourselves to the present, that is when we feel calm. And this, how do we get ourselves to the present? What can I, what is the exact problem right now? What can I do about it right now? Now, when we engage at this point, what do we do? When we start doing something tangible at that time, that action itself gives us a certain level of calmness. But beyond that, there's a third step. And we talk, often it is said, live in the present, which is good. We need to live in the present. But at the same time, we can't live for the present. We have to live for something bigger than the present. If, say, a person is sick with a painful disease, at that time, the reality right now is painful. They have to okay, take the patient, has to take the medicine properly, take the treatment properly, do the exercises properly. But for them, what will give them hope and energy is not live in the present. It's live for something bigger than the present. Yes, if I take this treatment, I can become healthier. So that is something which will come in the future. But in the present, when we live, as I talked about, till now these two steps, focus and engage, they get the inner screen to focus on something tangible. Some actionable issue that we can deal with. But still the bigger problem, we may say, still remains. That brings us to the next point. That is arise. Arise means that we understand that we exist above our situations and above our emotions. I talked about these three, three stages. There's the outer scene, the inner screen, and the inner seer. The same thing we could talk about as a three-level reality, vertically. So the outer scene is where changes are happening, where there may be a problem. There may be a fearful situation out there. It is at the inner screen where that becomes exaggerated. So by focus and engage, we decrease the exaggeration. And we focus on, uh, focus on and engage with something tangible. But still we may feel there is so much danger, there is so much insecurity. Things may go wrong in so many ways. But then we understand that I am different from all this. I exist above, above my situations and above my emotions. What do we mean above our emotions? Above our emotions means that we are actually not our emotions. We are the experiencer of our emotions. We are not just the experiencer of our emotions, we are also the choosers of our emotions. If we consider a snowball, at the top of the hill, it's not a snowball. It's simply a snow pebble. And when it is a snow pebble, at that time we could just kick it with our foot and it will break apart. But as that snow pebble starts growing, 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 it starts charging down the hill. It gains mass and it gets mom gains momentum. And by the time it comes down, it, can, it may have become such a giant snowball, it can bowl over an entire grown-up person. So, similarly, at the, if we consider this the slope of the hill to be like our consciousness, like our inner world, then at the top of the hill is a thought. It's just a thought that has come in our mind. And then as it starts rolling down, 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 it gains momentum and mass. It becomes an emotion. So thought, what if I what if I lose my job? What if I get cancer? What if this happens? What if that happens? That's just a thought that has come at that time. But as it keeps growing, it starts becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. And we start experiencing more and more emotions in connection with that. We start getting more and more overwhelmed by that. 
and by the time it comes down, we might be panicky, we might be paralyzed, we might not be able to do anything at all. So the word thought itself, we often use in two distinct senses. Mm -hmm. so one sense is, I just got a thought. And the other is, I have given this a lot of thought. I say, I just got a thought. There what we mean is, thought is like an event, uh, event occurring in our inner world. It's like a stimulus popping up on our inner screen. But I have given this a lot of thought means that I have contemplated systematically on it. These two usages convey that not just that there are two senses of the word thought, but there are two modes of action with respect to thoughts. One mode of action is I got a thought. That means that something which has appeared on my inner screen. I have given this a lot of thought. That means what has appeared on the inner screen, I have processed it. So our thoughts gain power only when we give them our thought. When a stimulus pops up on our inner screen, it's only when we think about it that it grows. The snow pebble will grow to a snowball to the extent it rolls down. So that rolling down is similar to our thinking about it. And most often, we give our attention unconsciously. Some fearful stimulus comes in and start dwelling on it and within moments we might feel ourselves palpitating and we might find ourselves becoming extremely fearful because of that. So that stimulus which comes in, if you understand, this is, okay, there is a situation out there that is a problem. There is some emotion of fear which is there inside me, but I am separate from this. I am separate from both of these. Understanding that I am separate from these does not solve the problem. It may not even remove the emotion. The fear may still be there, but we won't get carried away by it. And this is where spiritual knowledge comes into the picture. It is spirituality which helps us to understand that there is the core to us, the inner observer, the inner seer, who is beyond all the fluctuations at the physical level and at the mental level. And understanding ourselves to be that unchanging inner seer, that is the foundation of security. I, by F and E, by focus and engage, we start doing something tangible to deal with the situation. But even then, the situation itself might, might be very complicated. But by arise, say that I am separate from this. And when we understand this, the result of this is, we see that failure is a practical problem. It is not an existential problem. What do we mean by an existential problem? We often invest ourselves too much in externals. When we are not able to get something external which we think will give us security, which we think will signify success, our success, when we don't get it, then we don't just see that as an inability or as a failure at a practical level. When we, instead of understanding ourselves to be the inner seer, we start identifying ourselves too much with the screen or with the scene. The result is that we start, for example, equating our self-worth with our net worth. When we equate our self-worth with our net worth, then if we find that, okay, I lose my job. Then I'm not earning anything, then what is the what is the value of my existence? So whatever we identify very strongly with, if that goes wrong, if we face a failure in that, it becomes an existential crisis for us. 
one of my friends is doing a sociology doctorate in the post celebrity lives of basketball players of sports players specific generally or basketball players specifically in sports uh, career peaks by 35 40 and when some even if somebody has been successful at the end of it the road from most people struggle to climb up the road from being unknown to becoming famous now most people may not even succeed in that but even if we succeed in that from fame to infamy is a very difficult road to cross and everybody has to cross that so at that time unless if the if these players they just have identified themselves only as players if their self-worth came only from their performance then quite often after they stop performing they stop playing they just come unless they reinvent themselves they go into depression they while away their money they waste their life and they often become sink into terrible depression so if we understand that i am the inner seer then i understand that yes i am playing various roles and these roles are important for me i have to do them responsibly but if something doesn't work out it's a practical problem let's see what went wrong what did i I could have done this right, but I did it like this. I learned from it. But when we invest ourselves too much in it, when we get emotionally obsessed with it, then failure becomes an existential problem. And that's when fear overwhelms us. It is not so much the failure or the loss that is the problem. It is what the failure and loss means to us that is the problem. When we feel insecure, it is not so much because of we lost something, but it is, it is what that loss means to us. Somebody may lose a job, and somebody may decide to, okay, I've had enough, I've saved enough, I want to resign. And now both of them externally, they they're no longer working, but internally, there's a difference. thinking that one is thinking i lost something the other is thinking okay now i want to live my life the way i wanted i don't want to be obliged to 9 to 5 job let me explore life so we usually think of happiness distress security fear as a one step event and this is what happened and this has caused this emotion but it is not a one step event the two step event okay i'll explain what i mean by this can any of you would anyone any of you like to share which is your favorite dessert anyone yes shrikhand shrikhand okay thank you uh, so shrikhand so suppose uh, say shrikhand is a indian delicacy how do you describe it in english it's a dessert okay <laughs> it's a yogurt based okay it's a yogurt based sweet sour cream with sugar thank you <laughs> so now suppose you are going to a event a party a program and you come to know that there is going to be shrikhand after that then you look forward to it and then maybe there is a talk there is a discussion there is a get together and at the end of it you are anticipating when is the shrikhand going to be there when is the shrikhand going to be there and then when they start serving you find there is no shrikhand this is what happened and then the host or the organizer still actually the cook made a mess of things so i'm sorry we sorry we can't serve you shrikhand now when this happens what will be our emotion maybe annoyance irritation anger one of the negative emotions now imagine there's somebody else who also likes shrikhand but just a couple of days before they have been diagnosed with diabetes and they also know there's going to be shrikhand and they going to think oh everybody is going to take shrikhand and i won't be able to take be torment and then they come to know there is no shrikhand <sighs> so what happens for them it's relief 
So the event is the same. There is no shrikat. But for one person there is annoyance, for the other person there is relief. So actually speaking, it's not that the event causes the experience. Between the event and the experience is our conception. Is our conception. So as long as we think that this event is the cause of the experience, then we become dependent on events. But if we understand that between the event and the experience is the conception, then we can check the conception. We can evaluate the conception. We can change the conception. So, so this point, going back to the example of the, the going metaphor of the outer scene, the inner screen and the inner seer, actually something may happen on the outer scene at a physical level that may create some stimulus on the inner screen. Some emotion may appear over there on the inner screen. But we are separate from it. When we understand that our experience of life involves two steps, not just one step. It's not just the situation that is causing this particular fear within me. It is how I am processing the situation. So that inner security comes when we, are, when we don't invest ourselves excessively in externals. When we understand that I am the inner seer, I am... I, I, I am playing various roles, those roles are important for me, but those roles don't define me. Then we can have inner security based on our spirituality. And then come to the last point, that R is release. Now release means that there are in all situations some things in our control and some things not in our control. And trying to control that which is uncontrollable is the cause of dissipation of our energies. <coughs> dissipation of our energy means, say, if the tennis match is going on. In tennis, one player serves and the other player returns. Now when the player is returning, at that time the player has no control over where the other serving player is going to serve. It may be on the forehand, maybe on the backhand, it may into the be into the body. The, what the returning player has control over is, how best can I return? Get the ball back into the play. So similarly for us, in our life, sometimes we are serving. Sometimes it is for us to take the initiative. It is for us to make the decisions. But there are times, when there is nothing for us to take as the initiative. The just situations are going to come and we have to respond to them. So a lot of frustration comes when we don't mentally assess whether I am serving or whether I am returning. When we are serving, we are meant to, we are meant to take initiative. When we are returning, we have to focus on responding the best way we can. Practically speaking, say I am giving a talk right now. So now, when I am giving this talk, I am choosing what subject to speak. I am going to choose what examples to give. So in a sense, I am serving. Now after this talk, if we have question answers, then at that time, I will be returning. You will be asking the questions. I can't choose, I can't determine what question who is going to ask. So for us, letting go of things means recognizing that we can't be and we don't need to be serving all the time. There are times when we need to return and we can return. In returning the idea is our control is limited and we focus on that which is in our control. So when we let go of things, often we feel that I am going to lose control. But what we are going to lose is not control. We are going, all that we are going to lose is the illusion that we had control. When a player is returning, the player has no control. So when we release, how do we do that? Actually, we are parts of a whole bigger than ourselves. If we catch a flight, at that time, we are concerned whether we reach on time or not, whether we have our boarding pass, whether we have our ID proof. But we don't worry 
whether the plane has enough fuel or not. We don't worry whether the pilot has drunk too much or not. <laughs> we don't worry whether the pilot is, whether a competent person is flying the plane or not. Now there is a whole system that will take care of that. In our day-to-day -day life, we focus on playing our part. If you look at our own body, when we eat food, we think I work hard, I earn my food, and I maintain my life, I maintain my family members. But actually our eating food is just one pa small part of our bodily maintenance. From eating food to getting energy, it's a long process. When scientists are trying to create artificial digestive machines, they think the heart doesn't work, we have pacemaker. If the stomach doesn't work, can we have artificial digestive machine? which we put into our body. We found that we won't need a machine, we'll need a factory. And not just a factory, a chain of factories. It's a very complicated mechanism. Usually, we just eat food and we get energy. The only time we think of our digestion is when it doesn't work. <laughs> but our very existence is dependent on factors that are beyond our control. The process of converting food into energy is not entirely in our control. So we have to play the, we are a part, we have to play the part of the part. And there's the whole that will take care of the whole. This doesn't mean that we let go of everything. It, it means that we don't try to control everything. The attempt to seek security by controlling ex externals is itself the cause of great insecurity. When we try to put our, there is a change going around the whole world. When we try to position ourselves as separate, I want to be secure. I don't want to be insecure. That idea that we can separate ourselves from the flow of the world and we can exist as isolated beings, that itself is the misconception that puts us to fear. It's like, suppose a person builds up a castle in order to protect oneself. But when a castle is built, that's when people think, there must be something, a lot of, there must be a lot of money inside the castle. That's why the castle is there. So we build castle to protect ourselves from enemies, from thieves, but the castle is what attracts thieves to come. So it's like that, many times, it is our attempts for security that set us up for insecurity. So all of us, if we can anchor ourselves in the reality of who we are, then we can find security in insecurity. That means, be apart. Be not apart. Be not apart means, we, we can't conceive, we can't secure security by standing apart from the flow of life, which is ever-changing. It's like retaining breath in order to protect our breath and to protect our life. Be apart. Be apart means let the breath flow. There is a flow of life and we go along with that. In a mood of service and contribution. There is a whole and we are parts of the whole. Whatever be the name that that whole may have in different traditions, the point is that there is something bigger than us, which is at this very moment playing a part bigger than our own part for doing our part. Right now when I am speaking, I am conceiving some thoughts and I am expressing them. But how the thoughts in my head lead to the movement of my voice cords in such a way that precise sounds which mean something come out. I have no idea of this. So our very existence involves dependence on something bigger than ourselves. And when we let go, then we'll find that we will gain relief. That relief is not so much the relief that comes by, renounce, by rejecting responsibility, but it is the relief that comes by realizing reality, by recognizing and harmonizing with reality. The Bhagavad Gita depicts how Arjuna was a great warrior, 
was completely fear, fearful. So fearful that he was in tears at the start of the Gita. But he, when he heard the wisdom of the Bhagavad Gita, the result of that was he gave up his fear. He initially because of his fear he just became paralyzed and he put aside yes, he had raised his bow in readiness to fight, he put aside his bow. I can't fight. But by hearing the Gita, he picked up his bow. The bow represents our determination, our confidence, our enthusiasm. This is Arjuna put aside the bow in fear. But by hearing the spiritual wisdom of the Gita, he picked up his bow. Similarly for us, if we grow spiritually, if we understand our spirituality, the fearful situations may be there externally. But internally, by our security, by finding security within, we will be able to regain our enthusiasm, our confidence, our determination and act in a way that will be constructive even among situations that are filled with insecurity. I'll summarize. <coughs> I spoke on the theme of security and insecurity. I started by talking about how we all long for security but often there is more of a theater of security rather than real security. We imagine certain things that's going to make us secure. Just driving a car is more secure than flying in a plane. Or sitting at home is safer than going out on the road for jogging. But this is all and based on a misconception. There are <clears throat> when we want security, the way we can find it is by recognizing first that externally there is no security. Ex if, if we think security means stopping the change of things. That is like stopping breath. The way to, um, the way, uh, the way if, we, if we hold our breath, we will lose our breath, we will die. So how can we flow with the change if we internally want some security? That security comes not by controlling the externals, but by realizing the internal. I talked about the three level model of the self, body, mind and soul, with the hardware, software and the user. Then we did a thought experiment in which we saw that how there is a physical stimulus, say the hand might be clenching, unclenching, and there is a mental image of that, and then we are separate from that. So we are the inner seer. What appears on our mind is the inner screen. And, that, and then there is the outer scene. So fear occurs when this inner screen becomes like a movie showing us, uh, becomes like a TV showing us a horror movie. Like I said that there was this TV with window which doubled as a TV showing a gorilla in the back. Then with this model we look at this acronym fear. What was F? Does anyone remember? Focus. Focus, yeah. Focus means what exactly is the problem right now? When the TV starts becoming a horror movie, just pause it. Get something tangible rather than a whole mist or a haze of possible scenarios. What exactly is the problem right now? Is engage. engage, yeah. What can I do about it right now? So as soon as we ask ourselves these two questions, we come to the present. And that decreases the imagination, which is a major part of the uh, aggravation of the fear. Then A was arise. Arise means we understand that beyond the situation and beyond the emotion, we exist secure. Talk about thoughts can mean what appears in our inner screen as well as how we dwell on it. So a, a thought initially when it appears is like a snow pebble at the top of a hill. But by the time it comes down, it can lead us to self-destructive emotions and self-defeating actions. That's like it's become a snowball. So by understanding we are inner seers, it's different, we arise to that level, then we can observe and evaluate our thoughts. And last R was release. This means that even our very existence depends on things beyond our existence. So rather than seeking, seeking security by controlling everything, we recognize life is like a tennis game. Sometimes we are serving, sometimes we are returning. So rather than seeking security, we focus on the things that are in our control and let go of the things beyond our control. We play the part of the part and the whole will take care of the whole. 
It says when, I, when we speak, we think of the thought, but how the thought comes out as sounds, we don't know. When we eat, how that food converts into energy, we don't know. As our existence is sustained by something bigger than ourselves, by focusing on things that are in our control, we can act constructively. And thus, be apart, be not apart. Rather than trying to be someone beyond the changes of the world who can control all the changes, we go with the flow, playing our part in a mood of service and contribution. Now, whatever, I'll conclude with this point, whatever life may get us to, our spirituality will get us through. If we develop ourselves spiritually, understand our spirituality, then whatever life may get us to, our spirituality will get us through. Thank you very much. So are there any questions or comments? May, may yeah, please. If there is any uh, special advice for women? Uh, I mean, I understand about the things you've been talking and I'm trying to apply it in my life. But for example, my wife who is sitting next to me sometimes anxious about the things uh, sometimes anxious about the things which like I'm trying to explain for the same way like out of your control just take it easy like for example she's trying to give me a call and I'm driving and I cannot pick up the phone and if it, I'm just not picking up the phone she's worried something happened so I have to decline it with the text message I'm driving and now she's calm you know like any special advice like for ladies <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. So sometimes, is there some special advice for how to deal with fear for ladies? I would say it's not a matter of men or women. It's a matter of psychology. So all of us have our individual personality and our individual psychology. So bro, as I said that, all of us, see some of us may seek we get sick we need order and structure in our lives some people want adventure and newness in their lives see some people like to say high risk sports you go on top of a helicopter and jump down from the helicopter and they get a thrill out of it we say why are you, why are you risking your life like this but that's what gives them thrill so basically the point i'm making is that each person is different and for each of us, we may be able to live with lesser or greater levels of uncertainty. Sometimes uncertainty just comes on its own way in life. That time we can't control it. Sometimes insecurity just comes on its own. But if we find out what our particular psychology is, then we learn to orient our life accordingly. It's something like weightlifting. That all of us have muscles, but not all of us have muscles that are equally strong. So some of us may be, lift, be able to lift, say, 10 kg weight. Some of us may have 20 kg weight. Somebody may have 30 kg weight. Somebody may have much more. So now, for each of us, is if somebody can lift 10 kg weight, and then they start to lift 20 kg, that will be too much. If they lift only 5 kg, they will not be exercising at all. Now sometimes in the situation, somebody may have to lift 20 kg also. If that comes up, they lift it. Hmm. But on an average, if somebody has a capacity of 10 kg, they can lift 10 kg, maybe 11 kg. That's how their muscles will grow. So like that, for all of us, we can live with certain levels of certainty, certain levels of order, and certain levels of unpredictability. So we need to orient our life in such a way that whatever is the harmonious level for us, we find that. That means some people, they just have a habit. They disappear for days and days. They don't tell any news to anyone else. And then somebody else asks them, you know, where were you? Why didn't you respond? I says, you know, why are you so worried? But if the other person's need is for knowledge, then we have to understand that each person has their own psychology. So we have to find out in our own individual life 
and in our relationships how to function at a level that is equitable for each person and that that's why if we do not recognize this individuality in fear management and the same situation which might cause excitement to one person might cause anxiety to the other person so now it's not that the second person is fearful or the first person is fearless it is just that each psychology is different so we have to find out the equitable way in which we can function ourselves and function in our relationships so if somebody has a greater need for order and structure then while working with them we have to accommodate that need and if somebody has a greater need for adventure and exploration then some the other person has to recognize this is what this person nature is we have to adapt ourselves the sansi question Any other question? Yes. Uh, so coming back, uh, no, uh, <coughs> more close to you. So, um, so my question is: uh, so there are a lot of push and pull forces at the workplace, right? There is a lot of different dynamics, uh, there are situations, and then we talked about how to see ourselves apart from those situations. But uh, there are situations where you know you interact with other people, and then you know um, there is either. competitiveness or you know different things or dynamics how do you kind of survive on those with, with yourself being you know external to that situation but still be successful okay by the this is about to discharge we want to connect this it's 10% this thing okay yeah so when there are a lot of unpredictable forces that work in our workplace and amidst those how do we respond and function properly yeah in general when a particular situation comes in our life mm -hmm. there is there is the situation and there is a response and the situations are not in our control sometimes we can control them to some extent but quite often the situations are not in our control so when the impulsive response comes up within us so somebody does something and we feel like doing like that so at that time a if we can we can't always <coughs> be sometimes the situation is so so urgent that we may not be able to think and plan and decide at that time but overall if we learn to understand how we work and how other people work then we can slowly gravitate towards the right response say for example if a firefighter is new and this firefighter has just gone new with the, they have heard this fire and they rush there with the firefighting van and then they get out and then they see such a big fire it's become fearful and the hose at their hands hands drops and then somebody is jolt them pick up the hose do this and okay okay now when there is a seasoned firefighter even the seasoned firefighter when they see a big fire may still may still be fear but the training comes into the picture the instincts come that come from the training okay fire, okay the fire is here let's attack it from this side let's sure water over there so the difference between the seasoned with the novice fear fighter and the seasoned fire 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 uh, firefighter is between is actually not that there is no fear both of them may have fear but by the training the right response comes faster so similarly for us there will be unpredictable situations which we can't con which we can't do much about sometimes people will speak in a particular way sometimes things may go wrong and uh, go wrong wrong in a terrible way so at that time if we are self observant not at that time but overall what are the kind of situations that come in what this was the response that i had last time <coughs> but this is the response i can have so if we gradually become self observant then we will move towards the right response it's not necessarily that there's a wrong response and the right response in terms of one zero digital logic it's more of analog okay there is a wrong response but then as soon as you realize you do a course course correction come towards the 
right response and the more we grow spiritually the more we can become self observant actually the best way to be involved in the situation is to be not emotionally carried away by the situation there is a thin line between absorption and obsession absorption is where we are focused on doing the best that we can but obsession is where we become manic that if this doesn't work out we just get so overwhelmed that we are not thinking clearly we want to be intense not tense we want to be intense not tense and the difference between the two happens based on whether we can do self observation okay this is the situation this is how i need to act right now so when we are absorbed when we are doing something we'll be fully into it but we also have the capacity for withdrawal when we want to but when there is obsession there is no capacity for withdrawal because it consumes us and it just sucks in the situation sucks us in like a black hole with no chance to come out but when there is when there is that self awareness when there is spiritual understanding then we can choose to invest our consciousness when we need to and we can choose to divest our consciousness when we need to and that way we can if we are wrong if the unhealthy response comes up we realize it and we move gravitate towards the healthy response and then we invest ourselves fully does answer your question thank you I wanted to follow up the question uh, I was here. So suppose um, a person gets worried, right? I mean, just for driving situation, it's okay, everything. So I think the way you were describing the inner screen is showing all the horror movies, which is the context here. You need to do something to present what you can do. So I think what you were talking as an advice was figure out what you could do. to come to present to the deal of anxiety i mean at that point i did not understand your answer you were saying 10 okay. pounds or 10 kg the strategy okay. is okay i got you you don't do you did talk about that okay bring the picture and do something that you can do today so question would be what she could do to reduce her anxiety okay i get your question see i was not uh, when somebody is in a particular fearful situation at that time what can i do i was talking more about broad principles of relationship dynamics that is some people have a greater need to know and some people have a greater need to explore right so that uh, but specifically when when there is fear i think simply this for applying this four point acronym you know okay what can i do about it right what exactly is the problem right now what can i do about it right now now for arising upwards there are different ways some people might find uh, just deep breathing as a means to calm themselves some people might find thought exercises where we visualize that may help them to raise their consciousness some people may find meditation as a way to raise the consciousness some people may find mantra chanting as a means to raise the consciousness so basically at that time we have to find out what is the activity that can help us raise our consciousness so it may be by experience by experimentation by observation self observation we find out this is what i can do by which i can elevate my consciousness and then after that we can deal with it practically see focus and engage are about dealing with it practically but sometimes while dealing with it practically still the fear overwhelms us so we need to raise our consciousness so mantra chanting breathing visualization whatever way we can raise our consciousness that's that's what we should do at that time and then we can deal with the situation thereafter okay thank you so thank you very much